Ribbit. All right, today I'm gonna start up Sly and try to cover closures a little bit. Um, I don't know, I've been messing with them a little bit. I researched them a while back, but didn't really play with them, I guess. A couple years back, I guess. And then now I was trying to learn more about closures. And there's all kinds of stuff you can do, but I think I'm gonna make two videos. This one will be more simple. And then later on, I might try to play with doing like a primitive OOP, object oriented programming, using a closure and creating like a send send function to send messages to the closures, which I want to say maybe Guy Steele came up with when him and Sussman were playing around with uh, the ideas of small talk that Kay came up with. And they came up, or I think it was Guy Steele that came up with a way to do that, but I don't know, they both are, the variable me is unbound, I'm talking and not paying attention. Uh... So let's come over here and quote that dude. So like this is like a simple closure, I want to say. And then I guess you could fun call that too. Uh, but I don't know if there's a way to see that that's a closure, like. I might be able to scribe star, which is the last thing. So the star is just going to let me pull the last thing that was output. And you see it's showing it as a compiled function. And maybe because it's inside the let, it doesn't see this. And another way it might be to uh, inspect it also. And then there's a function right there. So... Let me see what the lambda list is. Three unbound function. I saw this unbound. You can hit U to go back up these. Uh, let me try that one more time and see what the... So zero is a function. It's showing the name of a function. And then right there it shows like a special function. So I hit three. And then right here you can see that it's actually noticing that that was a closure. Uh, I want to say that a common Lisp implementation doesn't have to let you know when something, you can hit Q to get out of here, is a closure or not. So it, any implementation may or may not let you know at some point if there's a closure. I'm going to say like Zeta Lisp I was reading the other day that I had like a, you defined your closures, I want to think, with a, something like that. And I also had a closure P so you could see if like something was a closure or not, but I don't think that exists in any of the modern Lisp implementations, or at least common Lisp. Uh, so, at least we're able, able to see that that was a closure. And then the reason this is a closure is because we have a function right here. It's using the variable name. And that definition is outside of it. So, there's like the scope, the lexical scope of the let, let's say, the environment that the let has right here. And then you have your function. And so if I had like a, like if I had an X here, let's say, and then I had a X here, and just pretend there's a print there or something, or values where I'm turning more than one thing, then this X right here is not a closure because it's defined inside the function. So as like a, being a parameter or whatever, when you pass on the argument, it's going to be local to this, where name is not local to the function, it's actually up here. And that's what creates a function, uh, a closure. It's just having like a, a variable set that a function is using outside of its own scope, I guess you could say. And so, uh, I guess speaking of like, lexical scope also. Uh, I want to say like in the past most Lisp were dynamically scoped and then Scheme came around and had like lexical scoping and Common Lisp is influenced by Scheme and so I want to say that's where it picked that up. And to show that 
you could uh like we can make, make a, something like this maybe and if we say like rivet and make rivet a frog and then define and let's just put like a lexical lexical test maybe we'll call it and we'll just have a frog do it verb and then i'll say list rivet and then give it a verb And then I could say, uh, but now I can just call that function inside there, right? So I can say a lexical test, and we'll just give it a verb of jump, let's say. And see, we have frog jump there. And now if I say this again, let's say let uh, rivet, and this time make it a rabbit. And then we'll say the same thing, I guess. Now we'll call that function though, rather than defining it, let's say. So now we'll say lexical test and just give it jump again. And then notice that it says frog jump, the same as this right here, even though ribbit's a rabbit here. And on top of that, you can see that it's complaining that in my let, I set a variable named ribbit. And then I never used it. So it's just saying like, ribbit is defined, but never used. It's just a warning. So it's not an error or anything, but like if you're maybe running this as a script, you're not gonna see a lot of these warnings, but inside the repo, especially like inside Sly, you'll see all this stuff. Oh, I think in any of the like SBCL will show you this stuff too, though, if you're running directly in it. So this right here would be rabbit jump if common lisp was dynamically scoped, like a lot of the lists used to be before Scheme came around. And so that's just a way to see that, I guess, is that, hmm, how do I explain this, I guess? We we're seeing let ribbit and then rabbit and then calling the lexical test jump. And since this is a lexically scoped as a whole, then it's pulling this frog from the definition up here because this is an environment lexical test was created in and so it creep it keeps its environment you'll say so like this variable is inside here so even though we're calling this separately with a let we're still using the function that's defined up here so it's going to use its environment from up here uh, that's probably the best way i can explain it but and i guess like with being lexically scoped and having closures then you can do interesting things like they like guys still if I didn't say already like came up with a way to do like object oriented programming or whatever so uh, like a suedo or simple primitive version of it anyway and so I think. Yeah, I did that. So I wonder what next would be interesting to show. Oh, well, I mean, that's just like a simple example. So I guess you could do, uh, it's a closure test. Let's say, see if like, we can get inspect or something to show it, which I already did, but this will be a little more involved. So I'll just make a sound, let's say, and hiccup. And oh, I need to put another one of these guys there. And then throw a lambda in here, let's say. I don't like the tilde A, so I'd rather tilde A. Hmm. 
And then if we try to call this, I want to say it's not going to work. Well, it will, but it's going to just spit out like a Lambda probably. And that's because my function has a function inside of it. And it's not really being called right there. So, I don't know, it's kind of weird, but being a Lisp 2, you can just call it like this. I don't know if that's equivalent to like if I go like this. Like this one might actually do what the first one did. Yeah. So this one was equivalent to this one but by calling this function inside the fun call. Now I'm fun calling this function right here, basically. And then I think if I describe that, it's still not going to show me that this is a... Like if I say closure test, let's say, then it's showing a compiled function. But I'm pretty sure if I was to inspect that instead, then we can go like one to the function, zero to the function, and then once again, three is the special function. So I want to say like now it'll show me there's a closure. Uh, and also, uh, I guess whenever, I wonder though, if I described, let me see, I just hit enter so I go backwards. Where I did that fun call, not this one, that one. I don't know what happens if I describe this though. Oh, it's just giving me that data out there because I'm calling the, what if I describe it like this though? Is that just the first one? It's just going to show me the same thing as last time? Yeah, it's just showing a compiled function. Right here, it's showing it's a compiled function. Like I said, it doesn't have to tell you that if it's a closure or not. Like it doesn't have to differentiate between a closure and a function as far as what it's telling you. It's up to like an implementation to do this stuff. I don't want to say like you could probably inspect some of the stuff with Sly just not uh, too familiar with it. Like the sly one, I'm not. I guess having closure tests in there is kind of annoying. Because then it doesn't tell me. Like then it's, if I see closure in here, it's the name of the function. Anyway, I could queue to get out of that. I don't really know the sly inspector too well, but maybe in there you could dig around and find that also. Um, I think though, if I def defund inside a defund, then I'll be able to see that it's a closure with a describe, I want to say. Uh, so let me just make a, a function. So let's just do defund. And then what can we make? Just make a beacon. And I'll have a noise. And then inside here, we'll make another function just to show that. And it gets kind of weird, weird too. With the way some of the stuff reacts whenever uh, you mess with it. I don't know. You'll see. So then if we have like do times I bursts, it's the first are up there. Then we'll just put a format here real quick. Tilt A dot 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 noise. So now that I made a beacon, I wanna say if I describe, let's say if I describe uh, make beacon. It's going to show that it's a function. So you see right here, it's just saying compiled function. But now that I have the other one in here, the beacon bursts, if I say describe beacon bursts, so far up, beacon bursts. 
I should have shown him what the error was. Common less use for beacon bars is undefined. Yeah. So maybe what's happening here is I haven't called this function yet. So maybe this function's not been created yet. So I'm guessing, unless I spelled it wrong, it doesn't seem like I did. Is that what's going on? So another weird thing we can do to test this out is now we can use def parameter to set a variable. And then let's call it beacon bark maybe. So beacon bark. And then make beacon. So now I'm calling that function rough. Well, this is strange too, but <clears throat> so I'm going to set this variable to calling this function with a rough. And then now I have a beacon bark. And then there's a way to clear this stuff out. I need to like figure out what that command is. So all this extra junk's not sitting there all the time. So now we'll front call this and we'll call it a, uh, we can bark again and then give it five, let's say. And so it's going to rough five times. Because this is a defund, inside of a defund though, if I was to set up another one, it's gonna redefine this function. So let's just say like def parameter here again. And then we'll say uh, rivet instead of bark. And then call this one croak, let's say. Now notice by running this, it's saying that it it's warning me that it redefined the beacon bursts because to run this function, it's defining a function. And so now if I was to call a uh, beacon broke, let's say, then we get rivet five times. But if I was to change that to a three, just to be different and then come back over here to bark, the bark is now a rivet because the function was redefined. I'm not really sure why you would use this. There might be some weird tricks or something to do, but probably it's like sloppy code for someone else to try to figure out what's going on if you're defining a function inside of a function like this. But I mean, like if you're for some reason you set a variable and it redefines all the, some functions you had written or something, there might be some kind of use case for that, but there's probably a better way to write it, I would guess. And so instead of using two defunds, oh, that function's been called though, that I was trying to look at earlier, right? So this defund, so now if I try to describe, which is the reason I tried to do this to begin with, describe uh, beacon bursts. Oops, I don't have to give a number here. And then now we finally see that we're getting our Describe to say that it's a closure, where before I was using expect, inspect to see that. And is there anything else before I move on from this one? Maybe to inspect that beacon bursts. I think it's just going to be the same. Although. Oh, wow, it's automatically saying it's a closure already. Like this time I don't even have to run anywhere. And you see it has like a closed over value of ribbit. Actually up here too. Well, maybe I can describe that in a minute. Because there's free variables. The free variables I think are what are making it a closure. Which I don't think I explained in the beginning, but like, I did kind of go over that, but I didn't call it a free variable. Maybe this variable here, like define beacon burst burst is not free because it's defined in this function, but because noise is used in this function, it's what's making it as a closure is the variable right here that's passed into this. But 
noise is the free variable that's making this a closure. And I want to say that's why here you see it has a close over value as rivet. Because maybe at this point, that's what it's spitting out, rivet, right? That variable is rivet. Although it's interesting that it's showing the variable's value. Oh, never mind, because it shows values rather than its name, right? So I guess I can already quit out of here because it's already showing me that it's a closure. And then I guess what I just did there, this whole guy here, would make more sense if you actually wanted to write something like this to use a lambda instead. There, there it's not going to redefine it every time. Where right here, if I say uh, beacon bark, it redefined it whenever I did the def parameter. And then when I call uh, beacon bark, it's riveting instead of croaking because I def define the croak right here after the other one. Where if I change this to be a lambda, let's say, uh, so maybe... Oops, I don't know, I like if I highlight with a mouse, it doesn't remove stuff where it would have if I uh, highlight it with the keyboard for some reason. And you don't have to put this here, but I don't know if it's like, I see a lot of people or a lot of code like this, but I think that's actually implied. Maybe it's just to make it distinct that there's a lambda in there or something, I don't know. Uh... I don't think I have to change anything else besides that, though. Well, I guess I could have renamed it, though. But since I didn't rename it, maybe I could just use these same things over here. So if I do this one, and then call that one, it's barking. And then now if I do the croak, define the croak, and then call the croak. There's probably a better way to do this, but whatever. And then now if I call the bark again, which I think you can just come over here and hit enter, and it brings it down there. So because I'm using a lambda here, it's no longer redefine that function every time. All these can be separate, which would probably be the normal way to do this. The only difference is now I can't describe this but I could inspect it and see that it's a closure, right? Uh, and then without getting into like more sophisticated stuff, I guess some more interesting things you can do is I guess you could use this as like kind of like private type of information, let's say. So let's just do like this. Let's just make a ribbit. Give them HP 20 STR 1 strength and then an enemy. Might as well just line these things up. We'll give it 10. We'll give it 4 strength, let's say. And then we can make a fly. And a flag nav, 2 HP, and strength of 0, let's say. And then once the let's closed, all the stuff will be gone. So I'm just going to do a prog in and print it out, let's say. So um, if I go 1, 2, 3, come back up here, and then say control X, R, T. Ooh, that did not do what I thought it was going to do. Let me uh, control G out of there. I think it was the way I did that. Oh, maybe I didn't highlight this. One, two, three. Control X, R, T. Let me just print rivet, let's say. So many. I did one too many. And then come over here and say enemy. And then come over here and say fly was. And then close the skies here. So here we have the let 
and the ribbon enemy and spit the stuff out. But now there's no way to access. Like, because it's inside the let, those things are gone, so there's no ribbit. So this is where like messing with closures can be kind of interesting, I guess, inside the let. My cursor is missing again. I don't know why it does that on Windows. Uh, and like these don't exist else. We could probably say like get HP ribbit or something. So I guess now we can define a function inside there. So it becomes a closure, let's say. So I'm just going to come up here and kill the rest of this stuff. And then put a function right here, let's say, and just get HP. And uh, we can just call it entity since there's different dudes, I guess. And then we'll do the cond. And then let's just say if entity equals ribbit. Then we just get the second of ribbit. And if equal entity entity is uh, enemy, let's say, then we'll second that. And then one more time. I guess there's a quicker way to do this, but I don't know it. Fly. And then we'll second fly. And then now. Now, because, like, if I try, like, is that defined? The let would have ran this. Or the defund earlier, I had to call a function to do it, but the let automatically ran. So I want to say now I should be able to say, like, describe, uh, get HP. And notice that it's showing it's a compiled function. And if I was to come back over here, let's say, yeah, inspect it. I imagine the same way we did the other ones, we could go in there and look. So one, and then zero, the function. And then now three again, it's a special function. And then you can see that there's a closure sitting there. Uh, this I, I need to learn to slide REPL probably. There's probably like a quicker way to jump around in there. Although it's kind of nice that like an SBCL just has its own little inspector thing. I don't know if that's like a, something that all implementations have to have or what. And so what I was doing here was there's a get HP now. So uh, there's like a command you can run and it'll like delete all the last trash you just spit out to the to the sly rebel, I think, which I need to learn that way. I can just like have this right back up here instead of it being way up there and can't see what's going on but at this point now we can say like get hp rivet and he has 20 and uh not that it matters but i don't need that one is that why i do that every time so now if I go like this, one, two, three, there's not three, I don't know. I need one more. One, two, three, and then control X, R, T. And I'll also say like, do I even have to say print with the prog in? Can I just say get HP on these guys? It's slow. You see how long it took to put that other one there? Uh, and then I think I need to close this guy. And make sure I did it again. And too many of them things. So this was fly. And this was enemy. Oh. So I was going to put print there. 
Yeah, I guess I actually needed that. Is this where you can use values? Oh, yeah, okay. So values just let you return more than one value. When normally it was returning one value. So when I called that earlier, it's just returning the last one, the two. Uh, so, uh, I mean, you can make that more fancy by putting that to be a format or something, I guess. Not that that matters, but I'm not learning less after all. Might as well just type some stuff. Uh, I think I would prefer that to be T, actually. And then the enemy has tilde HP. And we still got our little fly. I guess I need to do this again, tilde percent for a new line. Oh, tilde A, HP for fly. And just to feel the difference there, like if I put a nil here, then all the stuff's in quotes. Or if you want it to be lined up, then I'd have to put like a space there and a space here. But this right here is just some slobber that it spit out. And this is a string that it spit out. So this could actually be read back into the REPL. And so now I can get the HP ribbit let's say but I can't set F that and that's what I was talking about earlier so I'd say like maybe like the set F yeah and so you'll see right here it's like set F get HP is undefined which is kind of weird the way like that error always like is interesting to me like you're set I think I don't know set F is weird so that's a way like that your information inside here, I guess you could say wherever I define this thing at, like up in here, like, especially on the first one, the first one I did right here, you like, I can print the values out, but I can't get the values here. I created a function to where now I can get, get them, but there's no way to set these variables, like change these, change them to anything. It, whereas if you had like a global variable laying around, Anybody could change it but right now. Nobody can come in here and change these values right here. And so, of course, you could go in there and create some functions. So uh, I want to say if we just go back to our other dude right here. Where I made this one. And just continue from here. Then we can create another function. Uh, set HP, let's say. And give it entity again. Really, it's just a copy of everything else up there almost. But let's just type it out, get used to this stuff. So I'm gonna say equal entity ribbit. Then I wanna set F. Oh. E fun. I think I need to alter the HP too though. So I wanna say D fun, set HP to whatever the entity is, and then, uh, I'm just call it altered HP. And then if it equals this, then I'm gonna set F the second rivet to altered HP. So this is just the same thing again. How much just want to copy that thing, maybe? I'll do it one more time. These guys. 
enemy, enemy, uh, do the fly, and then the fly like this. Oops, I guess it didn't close. And we get some warnings. Are these only warnings though? So it's not an actual error, does that mean I can try it? Um, let's just see what happens, I guess. Oops. Set HP rivet to 200. And then if I say get HP rivet, then it's 20. Okay. So it pretended like it worked. And so what these warnings are right here, it's saying that it's a constant data. I'm getting three of these. Those are the values. So this is these guys right here complaining. I want to say in the past, I was trying to figure out what the difference between quote uh, me and me are and what the difference between list one, two, three is versus one, two, three. Because a lot of times it looks like they're the same thing. But what I think is happening right here is that, and I don't know if this is a compile time, like, because these are functions here. Because you have like read time, run time, and compile time, this stuff can like be altered or whatever. I don't know if it's a compile time, but I'm just going to say because there's functions right here that it might be a compile time. This is happening. It just decides that these are constants. Because if I was to say like def parameter, uh, toe, and then give it a list. Now, big, pinky, let's say. And then if I want to say set F, the second, which is basically what I'm doing up there, Right, set off the second of toe to be uh, black. And now if I call toe, it's able to change this. <clears throat> so we have this setting here as a quote and it's able to change it. So at some point in when list was running, it's just converting this to be constant, maybe to be like quicker or something, because this way has less to do if these things can't change, let's say. And then right here, whatever decided that up there didn't decide it here, so I'm still able to use set of second toe. So I think, after describing all that, I hope I'm correct, that the only thing I have to fix here is like make this a list. So here we'll just say like a list. I'm like list. And right here probably be faster to do all those things at once. And then uh I wanna say we have to escape these now. So HP is now having to be escaped and string is to or strength. And then it redefined those two functions that are sitting in there. And so now if I say get HP fly. And then I say set HP fly to be five. It's a big fly. And then get that. Then it's five. And we can say get HP rivet. And rivet has 20. So we can say set HP rivet to 200. And then grab that again. And now it's changed to 200. And so inside your closures here, you can create functions to alter this stuff. You could make it where it was just spitting data out or read only, or now we have a way to set this. And these aren't just like regular variables sitting there. You have to use this set HP to, to change those. Well, there might be some other ways to do this, but 
Uh, and so I guess with this, you can kind of see how maybe some simple object-oriented programming could be dealt out of here. And then you create a function that sends a message to these things or something. Like maybe rather than just having a get HP and set HP, you could have like a send and then it could determine both of these and get rid of some of this code that's sitting here or whatever. But anyway, I'm rambling. Ribbit.